Hello, and welcome to Section 3, Configuring the Router. This is Lesson 1, Basic Setup. And what we're going to do is get the router and the modem to see each other. Then we'll turn on the wireless abilities of the router and get it secure so that only the computers we want to will be able to get on the network. We're using the desktop computer located in the home office, the one that we connected directly to the router with an Ethernet cable. To configure the router, we're going to use Internet Explorer here, and you have to enter the IP address of the router. And typically this is 192.168.0.1, and on some routers it's actually 1.1. We'll change it to 0 and press Enter, and we're at the router's login screen. The username we'll use is admin, and depending on the router, the password will either be admin also, or it'll just be blank. If the IP address or the username and password don't work for your router, look on the bottom of the router and there's always a sticker with the IP address of the router as well as its default username and password. And on this one it's blank for the password, so we'll just log in. Now that's not very secure, having no password, or having it just be admin for the user and admin for the password. So the first thing we'll do is set a password to get into the router. Do that in Tools, and the admin password, we will enter one. It's best to use uh, numbers and letters, not just a simple word. And this router also has a user password that we'll also set. Most routers do not have this. On a Linksys router, to set the administrator password, you go to Administration, and it's just called Local Router Access. And we'll save the settings. And it tells us that we need to reboot to make this setting take effect. Rebooting uh, a router is just like your computer rebooting when you uh, go to start and shut it down and restart. Only this only takes about 15 seconds, whereas your computer can take minutes. OK, back at the logon screen, we'll type in the password we just put in and press Enter. Next, we'll make sure the router and the modem can see each other. We'll go to Setup, and we're on the Internet Connection screen. This router has a wizard it can walk you through to help you set up the connection to the modem. We're going to use the manual Internet Connection setup just so we can show you all the configuration options and walk you through them. Now, the Internet Connection type, the default on most routers will be a dynamic IP. This means that the router goes out to a DHCP server that your internet service provider has set up to get its configuration information and IP address. Most cable modems use this internet connection type. If we click this, we see we also have an option for a static IP. A static IP is also sometimes used by cable modems, mostly for business lines, where instead of going out to a DHCP server to get the IP address, you enter one manually, as well as um, sometimes you also have to put in a gateway and a couple of DNS servers. This is all information that you would get from your cable provider. The next one is a PPPoE. This is used by DSL modems. It can either be a dynamic IP or static. Static, again, is where you click and enter the IP address. You also have to put in a username and password and some other information that you would get from your DSL provider. This is all information that you would ordinarily put into the network setup of a computer directly connected to the modem. But instead, since this router is sitting between the computers and your modem, you enter the information here. The next one down is a PPTP. This connection type is mostly used in Europe and Israel. And there's also L2TP, also used in Europe. And the next one down at the bottom on this router, there's an option for Big Pond, which is an ISP located in Australia. On a Linksys router, the internet connection type is set on the main screen. It's under Setup and Basic Setup. And if we click it, we'll see that the options are very similar to our D-Link router, with options to enter a static IP address, gateway, subnet mask, DNS, just like in the D-Link router and, of course, the different connection protocols that are available. The modem we're using is a cable modem, and it gets its information from a DHCP server. We don't have to enter any of this information. It just gets it automatically from the server. 
Now we haven't made any changes so we don't need to save anything. If you've had to enter information here for your modem and you click Save Settings, it will ask you to reboot. On this D-Link router, if we go to the status page, it shows us a network status established and a connection up time of about 8 minutes, as well as an IP address, um, subnet mask, gateway, DNS server, IP address information that it got from the DHCP server. On a Linksys router, the status page is at the top right, and it gives you very similar information. The router name, the IP address it's getting from the cable modem, subnet mask, a default gateway, and some DNS. And if we open up another tab here in Internet Explorer, if we go to, let's say, we do indeed have an internet connection. Now let's set the router up so that we can share this connection with all of our other wireless devices. We'll go back to the configuration. On this router you go to Setup, Wireless Settings, and this also has a wireless network setup wizard where it will walk us through the configuration. We'll choose the manual wireless network setup so again we can show you all the uh, different options. So by default it's enabled the wireless network. The wireless network name is D-Link. That's the default that D-Link router ship with. Linksys routers are usually Linksys for the network name. We're going to change that to something. We'll call it Home Net for this one. You can call it anything you like, but for security reasons try not to use anything that's personally identifiable to you, like your name. This router here has an option to change the 802.11 mode. It's set as mixed with wireless N, wireless G, and wireless B. If you click that, you have options to set it to any one of the standards only, or different mixes of the different wireless standards. We're going to set it to 802.11 N and G, because that's the two kind of wireless devices we're going to have on this network. If you have all N wireless network devices, you can set it to N only, and that will improve the speed a little bit by having mixed N and G. The uh, transfer speeds between computers are a little bit slower. The next option you'll find on most routers is a wireless channel to use. This D-Link router has auto channel scanning. If we uncheck this, we can see it's on channel 6 and it gives you the gigahertz, and there's a list of channels we can choose. What this allows for is so that several different routers can be in the same range as one another and not interfere with each other. If you're having trouble with your wireless network, there may be another wireless network, perhaps that your neighbor has, that's using the same channel. And you can change this setting to a different channel to hopefully get rid of the interference. We're going to leave it set to auto channel scan, and it will figure out what channel is best to use on the fly. There's an option for a transmission rate. You can choose the different options. We'll just let it do automatic. The channel width, here it's set to 20 megahertz by default. For better performance, you should choose auto 20 or 40. It'll try to use the 40 megahertz, which will give you better performance. And if it runs into problems, it'll default back to 20. But we'll let it try 40. There's also a visibility status, and by default it's set to visible. On other routers, this is usually referred to as broadcasting the SSID. The SSID is the network name that you've set up here. If we were to set this to invisible or another routers to turn it off, it wouldn't broadcast that you have a network. So unless you knew the name of the network that you set here, you wouldn't be able to connect using any wireless devices. You would have to manually put in the network name. If you're very concerned about security, you can turn the SSID off or here use the invisible mode. That way your neighbors or people just driving by in cars won't be able to see your network. Just for ease of use, we're going to leave it on. We're going to set it to visible. And we're going to rely on our wireless security mode and the key that we choose to do most of our security for us. Right now, the security mode is none, which means that anyone with a wireless device can connect to the network. We'll click this. And on here we have three options, WEP, WPA Personal, and WPA Enterprise. WEP or WEP, if you choose that option, this is considered very poor security. Anyone with the right software and a little bit of know-how can break into a WEP secured wireless network in about five minutes.